the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven disciples as they were reclining at table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. This is a wonderful summary verse. It neatly explains the proper relationship between faith and baptism. Notice, first of all, that faith and baptism go together and that they both have to do with salvation. Secondly, we also learn that baptism without faith does not save. And thirdly, we see that a lack of baptism does not condemn, only unbelief condemns. Therefore, let no one despise or think lightly of baptism, but receive it in faith as a gift. For through faith and baptism, we are, in a very real way, united in Christ's death and resurrection. You are clothed in Christ, which means to bear his righteousness. And you are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, who helps us to grow in faith and love. Baptism is the means by which God adopts you, for connected with the ordinary water is God's promise that you are truly baptised into the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is something that we apprehend by faith alone. So, in other words, not only do we get to hear the gospel, but we receive the same in tangible form in the waters of baptism. In this way, Peter compares baptism with the waters in the flood that quite literally saved Noah and his family through faith, and writes that baptism now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities and powers having been made subjected to him. Amen. All authority in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is our gracious God and dear friend, who has washed away our sins for all eternity. You are blessed and holy, and this is his promise to you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. 
May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.